Hello everyone! Today we are going to talk more about colors, but not color inspiration, but really color mixing 101. And what we're gonna do are some novice and intermediate and advanced color mixing techniques to create different colors, different effects. That's basically why you would wanna do this in the first place. Now, one thing of note is in the color spectrum, colors are literally infinite. There's an infinite amount. When you take into consideration different shades, darker, lighter colors, things like that, not to mention too, people see colors differently. So when you take a bunch of different variables into the equation, you begin to realize you may mix a color that's never been done before. It could be just a slight shade off. So today what we're gonna do is a couple of things. Uh, first thing I wanna go over is some of the tools that you're gonna need in order to do this properly. Obviously, you're gonna want some empty jars. Now, I repurpose all of my paint jars. I use them for custom colors. If you wanna get your plastic spoons, we know these very well, to be able to test the colors out before you spray them. Colors sometimes do dry differently and slight shade different than what it is when it's wet, so you gotta keep that in mind. Another thing you're gonna want is a paint mixer. This one is from Badger. I've had it for years now. It serves me well. Uh, you can, if you don't wanna spend the money on something like that, use one of the cheap Ikea coffee stirrers. You're just gonna have to cut off the little uh, wire things that are on the end of it because you don't want foamy, frothy paint. That's not good for your paint. Another thing you're gonna need when using acrylics, because that's what I'm dealing with today, I'm just talking about Tamiya's, is 91% isopropyl alcohol. You can use 70% when it comes to mixing and diluting your paints, but it just doesn't work quite as well as the 91%. I find I have to use less of that in order to get the effect that I need. Another thing you are going to want are pipettes. These little plastic things right here, turkey baster looking type of ordeals, they have different measurements in milliliters on them. And what that helps you to do is mix your colors exactly as you need when you are putting them into the jar to make whatever custom color you want. Another very vital thing, especially if you're just starting out doing this, is a notebook. You want a pretty cool notebook or a pretty ugly notebook, it doesn't really matter. And what you're gonna wanna do is write down the colors that you use to be able to mix a specific custom color so you can replicate it later on in the event you don't mix enough and you run out as you're spraying whatever project it is you're spraying. So having a good list in mind for eyes view to be able to know how to replicate a color is vital. Now, different resources you can use in order to learn a little bit more about colors. There are color wheels that you can buy online, which I'll link below. What they do will kind of slide, if you will, and as it slides, it will show you what kind of color you can make by mixing two or three other colors. It's kind of rudimentary, but it will give you a good idea in order to start with, let's say you wanna have a custom blue, well, you know what colors that you'll have to mix in order to make that blue. It's up to you really to add black, add white, add whatever other colors to just make a custom blue for you. So really you're just gonna be dealing with the primary colors, the red, yellow, green, blues, and things like that, and mixing them to create whatever shades of color that you want. Now, there are other different options and different techniques to take these color mixings to another level. You can use your regular base colors, or we can start to mix it up with metallics. Anything that's got metal flake inside of it, you'll be able to create different sheens, whether it's pearls or metal effects. There's another thing you can use from Alclad. It's called Holomatic Spectral Chrome. Now this stuff is incredible with the color dynamics. It will just really make a cool looking rainbow effect on whatever it is you're painting. And this can be used a couple of different ways. And in this video, I'm going to show you some different effects with this. And maybe while I'm painting and showing you stuff that I know, I do have an idea to try something different. So I'll experiment alongside with you so you get to see if it's a dud or if it works out. Who knows? You can also make different color shades and different color effects with different types of colored clears. Now, if you've seen the uh, candy color video that I did in pre-shade video, which I'll link below, you'll see that there are some things that I can do with uh, clear coats and tinted clear coats for that matter. And, and, and here's something that I did last year that a lot of people pretty much flooded my inbox on Instagram wanting to know about, and I'm not even joking with that. And that is, how did I do glow-in-the-dark paint. Well, you know, after thinking about it, I wasn't gonna share that, but who really cares? Because everybody figures things out at some point. And the cool thing about sharing what you know with other people is the fact that they may be able to take it to a different level. You, personally, let's say me, I'm thinking one thing, 
All of you may think of 50 million other things to come up with, and then we can all share that and we can all benefit and just continue to grow when it comes to these different paint finishes. So we're going to use this lovely kind of stuff right here. It's glow powder. So I'm going to show you how to do some glow effects like that as well and a couple of different techniques to get, well, different types of looks. I wouldn't advise you to follow along with this video because I'm really going to kind of just go along and if you want to go back and watch it as a resource that would probably be good. But aside from the tools I already told you that you'll need, your pipettes, your plastic spoons, your different various paints that you want to use, your book to be able to write everything down in, and of course mixing cups or as I like to use jars to be able to save the paint for later and you're going to want a paint thinner which in this case we're doing acrylics i'm using 91 percent isopropyl alcohol so let's get started the holomatic spectral chrome and i'm going to show you what happens when you do this paint once you lay this on different base colors what kind of effects you can expect to get so the first thing we're going to do is spray it on a white spoon next thing is a black spoon and then the last thing will be a neutral gray the thing that is important when you're using holomatic spectral chrome is the fact that it's very opaque so on its own it doesn't really necessarily do much it's going to stand out more or less depending on the base coat that you use ideally you want to use a dark base coat it can have different effects on different colors so i'm going to turn my tractor fan on right now so it's going to get a little noisy and then what i'm going to do is put a mask on but you're not going to see that because i'm going to take you and put you down here so the thing about this holomatic spectral chrome is the fact that it's already pre-mixed and pre-diluted so you really don't want to put anything else in here to thin it because that would pretty much ruin it at this point the so first thing i'm going to do is take my airbrush I'm going to just put a little bit in here. So the first thing we're going to do is spray this on the white base. Now the reason why I want to do that is to show you from least impactful, kind of impactful, most impactful when it comes to the base coat and what this stuff can accomplish for you. Now it doesn't have to be white, gray, or black. You could do it in greens as the base, reds as the base, whatever it is, and you're going to get this effect. The less you put on, the less effect you get. The more you put on, the more effect you get. So let's take white. So right off the bat with the white, it's changed the color a little bit and it's made it more of a grayish tone. But I'm not too sure if the camera's gonna pick it up. You'll be able to see the rainbow effect, that almost pearlescent effect that's happening right now on this spoon. And that's what this stuff does. It has a rainbow slash pearl effect. And when you do it on a white base, you're going to have really a pearl type of look to it. Now when you do it on a gray base, which is what I'm going to do right now, you're going to see more of the rainbow type of finish on it. Again, not sure if this camera is picking it up, but you will see more of a rainbow type of finish. However, when we go and do it on a black or a dark base color, well, things change quite a bit because now you have a really neat galaxy type of effect that is just popping with all sorts of colors so i wasn't joking when i said this is a very dynamic top coat you can put on here that is basically in a nutshell what holomatic spectral chrome will do for you now as i mentioned you can mix it up a bit the second finish we're going to try is we're going to use a red clear and i'm going to spray it over this black base here that we've done this to see if we can still get that kind of rainbowed effect underneath the clear now i'm not too sure because i haven't really tried this yet so we're experimenting together as i said in the beginning so now that i've got my red i'm going to pop some in probably a little more than i should have right there but that's okay and now i'm going to spray over that red clear over the black base that had the holomatic spectral chrome and the effect is not really there all that much quite honestly it's kind of sort of there but not really if you really want to have it to where you have a color as your base with this holomatic spectral chrome what I would advise to do which is what I've done is do a very light mist coat of the holomatic spectral chrome on the clear coat, the top coat that you're using. So right now I'm going to pour 
that back in the cup. What I'm going to do now is take a little bit of this paint here and I'm gonna pour a little bit of my cup. Now mind you, the cup already has red in it, the residue left over from this clear coat. I didn't clean it out. But I'm just doing this to show you, you can get with a very light base, mind you, you can get that rainbow effect with a red clear coat on top or any other tinted clear coat that you want. There we go. That actually looks really, really nice. So together we have discovered something new. Now the thing about it is, if I were to spray more of this Holomatic Spectral Chrome, let me show you what happens. If I put a lot of it on there, now the red is kind of totally toned down to the point where it just looks a little pinkish and kind of a little ugly actually. But we have that nice Holomatic Spectral Chrome effect. However, because we used too much of it, it's changed the base and now our base color is no longer what originally you may have intended. So just a bit of caution, the more of this stuff you spray onto a base coat finish, it's going to cover that base coat eventually to where you're just gonna have a straight up rainbow effect and you won't even really see the base coat as much anymore or it will change the color of the base coat as you can see right here. All right, so that's it for the Holomatic Spectral Chrome and just a couple of different finishes you can accomplish with different base coats using it. Moving on, we're gonna pull out two more spoons here and we're gonna try another effect, which is a little bit similar to the Holomatic Spectral Chrome. So what I'm gonna do right now is take this clear red that I have from Tamiya. What I did before I was filming is I put a little bit of metal inside of this because I wanted to make a pinkish type of metallic color. Here is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this white spoon and I mixed a little of this inside this cup. And so now I'm just going to spray a quick coat onto this spoon. And as you'll see, I have made a salmon type of pink metallic finish. That's basically that. You can mix metallics into clears and you can make a metallic base slash top coat. So you're pretty much one and done or however many color coverage coats it takes to be able to get the color you want. All right, so now we're gonna get to another portion of this, which is really just mixing base colors to get a different color and how you go about accomplishing that. This is the most simple part of it. And that is, let's say we want a teal. Now, teal is a color I've mixed a million different shades to one. I've had multiple people that really love the color. What I do is take any kind of base blue that I'm looking for. So if I want a light teal or a lighter color, I'm gonna start with a lighter base blue. If I want a darker one, I start with a darker base blue. And from there, I can also change the shades around by mixing in either a lighter green, a darker green, clear coat to make it a little bit more opaque. And basically, that's really all it boils down to. The desired finish I'm gonna get is dependent on the amount of any of these colors that I mix into this fresh bottle of blue. So now we're gonna do a little of these mixes. So let's see what kind of color teals we can get by mixing some of this blue. So first thing I have to do is obviously mix this blue because it's brand new. And because it's brand new, as I mentioned before a while ago, how I mix the paint or thin it, I just basically take the alcohol and put it up just before the brim. And that is my ratio. It's about a one to one. So now that I've got this mixed, I'm gonna take my pipette and let's say if I wanna go for a more greenish teal, what I'm gonna do is measure out, let's see here. We're gonna go one milliliter because we're only doing a little bit. One milliliter in this cup. And then I'm going to take another clean pipette and I'm gonna go into, let's say my deep green that I have right here. I gotta mix this up first. It's already been pre-mixed as I've used this color before in the past. And now I'm going to take another clean pipette. So I did one milliliter of the blue. So I know I need to obviously use less green. So I'm going to use, we'll start out with half of a milliliter. And we'll pop that in there. And now what I do is just mix it. And as I'm mixing it, I'm gonna get a chance to see exactly if this color is too green or too blue. And right now, it's too green. The green was overpowered. So now what I do is go back, take my pipette, and I'm gonna put in another milliliter of blue. 
actually am going to put in two milliliters of blue because I know that the green was too dark, so I'm obviously going to need a good amount more blue. And now it's starting to take shape a little bit more as a teal color, as you can see right there. If I want to make it lighter, since this blue is already light, I'm going to go take another milliliter and I'm going to put it in there. So now if you do the math, and I was writing this all down, I would have the recipe in milliliters and of paint colors to be able to make teal. So now I've made a greener tint of teal, and if I go and pop that in here and spray this on one of these spoons, you'll see that I went from light blue to dark green, mixing it in with the right amount of milliliters there, and I now have, I now have teal, just like that. And that is exactly how doing these color mixes works. You're gonna be taking the one color with another color that you know come together by looking at that color wheel or any other online resource that is going to create another color that you want. You can't subtract, all you can do is add. So go little by little with the colors until eventually you get the color that you want. So really in summation, that's just how this stuff kind of works out. You add a certain amount of paint in, add another amount in, and you keep going until you get the right recipe. Write it down the whole way, so this way when it's done, you can write down the name of the color you made, write down the exact measurements you needed, and you're good to go for recreating that color again. Moving on, now if we jump forward to another type of finish we can do, this is the one a lot of people ask for, and this is using glow powder, glow paints. Now, when you're using glow paints, there are companies that do make airbrush glow paints, but this stuff right here is from a company called Glow Mania, and this is a Pro Effects pigment. Now this one is the, I believe, bluish pigment powder, like a green or a blue. It comes in reds and different colors. With this stuff, since it is such an extremely fine powder, it will go through my airbrush without any issue. Now the thing is, when mixing glow paints, in my experience when doing this, you can mix it with a clear coat, and that's basically what I would say to do, is mix it with clear. However, when you're mixing it, you do not want to make your clear coat too thick. And that is what this stuff will do. It is a thickening agent. You're mixing something that is a powder into something that is a liquid that's already thick in the first place before thinning. And you don't want to get a sludge because then it's not going to come out of the airbrush well and it's going to kind of look like garbage. So we're going to try a couple of different things here. So the first thing we're going to do is dilute this clear coat. So now that I have my clear coat already pre-mixed, I'm going to take an empty jar here and I am going to add just ever so little of this stuff into here. When I say ever so little, I'm going to say we got about that much. That's not a whole lot inside there if you can see but it's just enough to give some kind of an effect. Now what I'm gonna do is take my pipette and I'm going to mix, it's about a three to one mix of glow powder versus clear coat. And I wanna make sure that it is mixed very, very, very well. You want it to really, really spread out in the clear coat. So this way when it sprays onto the piece that you're spraying, it's gonna come out evenly. So now I have a pretty good milky consistency here and I'm gonna put it inside my spray cup as you can see, it's pretty milky. It's a little bit thicker than normal, but not to the point where it's just overtly thick to where it won't come out. Now, the other thing is the spray pressure when you're doing this type of finish, because the paint's a little thicker and you want it to atomize well, I actually put my airbrush pressure up to about 40 to 45 PSI. It's kind of high, but I want this to be able to atomize well and shoot out well. So if I go back over here and let's say I take my original pink red spoon thing that we experimented with and I do a top coat of clear with this type of clear coat what's going to happen is I'm going to put the clear coat on relatively thick but not so much to where it is dripping because I want to get a lot of this stuff on here I want to get this glow powder onto this thing here so if I take my time and let's say I'll give myself about maybe 20, 30 seconds here. So I'm gonna do a time jump. I'm gonna charge this under the UV light that I have right here. I'm gonna turn all the lights out and then we're gonna take a look if we see any of the glow effect on this actual spoon that I just sprayed with this clear coat. 
So now we are inside of a dark room and now you'll be able to get a chance to see, if I can get this to focus well in the dark, exactly what this stuff will accomplish when you spray it the right way. Now grant that I say the right way because I know there is a right and a wrong way to do this, but there's also other ways that may be right too. So it's really up to you to experiment with this. Now all I did on this spoon here was just basically spill out the remnants I had inside my paint cup and it gave me that kind of effect. This is something to fool around with, to play with. There's a lot of different things you can accomplish. Now granted, the way that it's coming out right now on camera does not in any way really show the impact of this stuff in person because you can kind of see the little individual powders and it just really, really looks cool. So now here's the interesting thing. If I take this and I walk out now over to the light, you will see that I have a dog. But in all seriousness and jokes aside, here is kind of what it looks like in the regular light. You can't really see the glowing at all. Now the other thing is this will give you a slightly textured finish when you're doing it. So you really want to be able to understand that you're going to have to do multiple coats of clear coat on this thing to be able to get it to shine really well. But the more clear coat you add, the less glow you're going to get. So it's kind of a give and take and you're really going to have to play around with it. But that's the whole point of this video. That's to be able to make you all go out there and try different things and report back. Let me know what you find. Let others know what you find. Another thing you want to keep in mind when you're spraying glow powders is the fact that you really are going to have to clean out your airbrush very, very thoroughly because those little particulates can get in there and it's like having grains of sand inside and you do not want that. So as soon as you're done spraying using this kind of stuff, make sure you disassemble your airbrush, you clean it out thoroughly, put everything back together so everything will function the way it's supposed to when you need to use the airbrush again. This was a very long video and this took me a long time to figure out the format, how I was gonna do it. And um, I really hope this helps you all, that you all start to practice different things, to experiment with paint mixes and uh, different types of effects. It really is endless what you can accomplish. It's just really up to you individually and really all of us as a community to do the best that we can to try different things, to think outside the box. And sometimes thinking inside the box is not a bad thing because the answer could be right in front of your face as to what it is you want to accomplish and are stuck in a little bit of a quandary as to how to do it. All things considered, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If there are any more types of paint finishes or paint mixes that you would like me to try for you to show you, or if there's anything that maybe you've come up with that you want me to be able to present to everyone else, by all means, comment below. Let me know and I reply to all of your comments to the best of my abilities. And on top of that too, you can feel free to shoot me a message on Instagram at Curio Ventura if you don't feel comfortable making a public comment or suggestion. If you like what you saw, hit that like button, share, and comment below to let me know what you thought. The way this channel grows is with those thumbs up, so please, if you watch this and you like it, hit that thumbs up. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great day, and 